The commitment to change has to come from within us. It's Good Day New Mexico with Mariana Rate. Are you financially fit? Well, up next, we'll show you how to bank on yourself and stick to your financial goals. Have a heart-to-heart -heart with yourself. Are you financially ready to make that next purchase? Are you comfortable with your bank account? Well, with Pointers for a Secure Future is best-selling author of Bank Yourself. We have Pamela Yelling with us today. Nice to see you, Pamela. Welcome back. Thanks for having me back. And Happy New Year. Well, you know, we're still in January mm -hmm. at the end. Many mm -hmm. of us have maybe fallen off track with our New Year's resolutions. Uh, some of us have already set ourselves up for failure, mm -hmm. unfortunately, when we make those resolutions in the beginning. Right. What can we do financially? Well, typically only one out of five people who set a New Year's resolution, whether it be to lose weight or get in shape or to get in better financial shape, end up not keeping their resolution. So one out of five will fall off the wagon very quickly. And the number one key to being successful with keeping your resolutions and keeping your commitments, and it's not too late, it's not too late even though we're already pretty well into the new year, the number one key is us. The commitment to change has to come from within us it, and not from the people around us. If we feel pressure from friends, family, relatives. It's easy to have that pressure it around. It is. When, hey, let's go shopping or let's go eat or right. well, let's hang out and go on vacation. Wait a minute. But yeah, you want to be a part of that. It is, but that is a total recipe for failure. So the, the key is to sit down and have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with yourself. Where am I now? and where do I really want to be? Now, I'll confess, last year, I fell off my New Year's resolutions on January 2nd. Okay, many, many of us are in that same boat. Okay, so. so this year, what I did is I really sat down and had that heart-to-heart -heart talk with myself, and I said, Pamela, what if you end up at the end of this year in the same place you did, you fall off those resolutions again, are you willing to accept that? And the answer for me was absolutely not. And I sat down and really came up with a step-by-step -step plan on how to change. And one of those steps includes having support. Yes, that's, that's very, very, very critical. And actually it really helps to have an ally or a coach that you can discuss your progress with, they can help keep you on track and so on. And another interesting thing that they've discovered, the research that they've done, shows that having incentives and disincentives oh. for meeting your commitments is really helpful. Interestingly, disincentives are more powerful than incentives. Let me give you an example of this. Uh, let's, uh, <laughs> let's just say that, in fact, there are a number of websites and a number of, like, such as Goal Pay that exist now where you can make certain commitments and then if you do not keep them, you actually have to pay money to a oh. certain other, so somewhere. You have to pay it somewhere. Okay, the so then that we're like, I don't want to do that because I don't want to give up five bucks. Well, but, but what, what works best is to say that you're going to make that payment to an organization or a charity that you do not, dis you do not agree with. You oh. actually dislike their principles. You dislike that, their organization. Okay. And that's more powerful. Now, I'll give you an example for myself. Uh, the method that I teach in my book, Bank on Yourself, and on our website, bankonyourself.com, has helped more than 400,000 people grow their wealth without losing a penny when the markets crash. However, it goes completely against the conventional wisdom and what some of the financial, big financial gurus talk about. So for me, the disincentive that I set myself this year was that if I don't keep certain commitments, I am going to have to go out and buy 20 copies of their oh. books. <laughs> I actually like this idea. Yeah. You know, it really it gets you, sets you on track, keeps you there. Exactly. And, uh, you, you know, okay, yes, we have a goal. Some of us may fall back, but it's not too late to get back. It's not too late. It's not too late to um, set yourself up for uh, um, success. Success. And that is, that is the, the next key is don't set yourself up for failure. Here's an example. Let's say that one of your New Year's resolutions was to decrease your spending uh, and decrease your debt. Now you're getting your credit card bills and you realize, oh no, I spent too much money, more than I had intended to or I should have over the holidays. Well, what a lot of people do is they just go, it's all or nothing. I messed up. 
I'm done for the year, I'll worry about this again next year, and that's definitely setting yourself up for failure. What you want to do is not take an all or nothing approach. Sit down with yourself and your ally, your coach, and say, all right, what did I learn from this? What can I do differently? And come up with a step-by-step -step plan. Or pick up Bank on Yourself at bankonyourself.com by Pamela Yellen. Thank you, Pamela. Nice oh, to see you Oh, it's my again. pleasure, Marianne. Thank